Nicotine salt is nothing new. It's blossomed into a very popular product. And initially, I was against it due to its implications for increased dependency. Someone who doesn't know better is going to see that higher milligram level and think, oh God, why would you use more nicotine? But those in the know of its molecular properties won't be all too concerned. Uh, what exactly is salt nicotine though? And why should you invest in it? Let's have a closer look. Initially, seeing 50 milligrams on bottles at shops was a bit alarming to me for advocacy related reasons, but it also intrigued me. So I asked myself, does it really pose a hazard? I had to look deeper into the scientific side of things to come to a real conclusion. Typically and historically, e-liquid manufacturers have used freebase nicotine, which is in layman terms, uh, the purest form of nicotine. Nicotine salts, however, are not limited to only nicotine. They also have other organic compounds that are found naturally in the leaves of the actual tobacco plants. And as a direct result of this, the chemical makeup structure is more sound and stable, i.e. a little more gratifying and natural. To get just a little bit more scientific, freebase, and I hate that term, it makes us sound like a bunch of junkies to be honest, uh, but scientifically it's called freebase. So freebase is isolated by removing protons from the nicotine. Meanwhile, nicotine salts provide nicotine in a completely unaltered state. Salt nicotine is not for everybody though. I have to drive this point home, but they do offer a very specific solution that can benefit many vapors, especially people who recently or are trying to quit smoking. Now, while some of us are a bit more diversified in terms of devices that we use day to day, as in blowing massive clouds and using more powerful devices, nicotine salts cater more toward those who are MTL or also known as mouth to lung users. Lower power devices are handy in a lot of situations. Those lower power devices have drastically, and I do mean drastically improved, as you can see here, I have a bunch to speak on. Those lower power devices have drastically improved over the last couple of years. So much so that it really surprised me after these companies sent me these products. Uh, we'll be reviewing them shortly. Right now, let's discuss the benefits of using traditional e-liquid over salt nicotine. Okay, so number one, it's more readily available. Nicotine salts have only recently started to gain steam in the vaping world. As a result, many shops don't yet carry salt liquids. And even when they do, it's a pretty limited supply. Number two, device compatibility. Traditional liquids are generally more suited for use in a variety of devices, meaning those who enjoy blowing huge clouds without the throat irritation from nicotine delivery will enjoy using traditional e-liquid more, while users of salt nicotine better delivers a high dose without having to use a high wattage device. Me personally, I use both. Typically lower power devices with salt during the day and traditional while hanging out relaxing with friends. Number three, there's just more flavors. There's no way anyone could account for or know all of the flavors of traditional e-liquid on the market. There's thousands upon thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of different flavors of traditional e-liquid currently on the market. In the salt nicotine category, however, unless you mix your own, your choices are pretty limited right now. Of course, this is changing as more companies get into using salt nicotine in their formulations. And last but not least, less nicotine. For some, the biggest benefit to using traditional liquid is that they have less nicotine. If you're looking to cut down to zero milligram, you wouldn't be interested in the higher nicotine levels offered in salt nicotine. However, this only benefits a select small group of vapors as we're all different and we don't share the same vaping goals. If nicotine delivery is your goal, nicotine salt allows you to vape with higher levels up to 50 milligrams. Widely available traditional e-liquids, on the other hand, usually max out at around 12 milligrams. Individuals who are transitioning from smoking to vaping often find the higher nicotine levels of salt liquids to be much more satisfying. Also, there is a smoother hit. Those who prefer vaping at higher levels typically prefer nicotine salts since they are much smoother than traditional e-liquids. Vaping traditional liquids at higher levels often lead to an overbearing and unpleasant harshness. I'm sure we can all relate to that. 
Uh, since nicotine salts vape smooth with less of a bite, vapors with a preference for higher levels uh, find that salts are much more satisfying. And I'm not excluded from that opinion. And perhaps one of the best points to make here is, simply put, you also use less liquid, particularly if you're mixing your own liquid. Due to the biochemistry of salts, uh, they tend to leave vapors more satisfied and for a longer period, meaning you actually hit your mod way less often. Those who use nicotine salts tend to vape less, and as a result, they have savings. They save a lot of money because their bottles last much, much longer. So this could be a huge benefit for a lot of people who are looking into using nicotine salts. Now, onto the specific question, are nicotine salts safe? A recent report from the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine uh, concluded that substituting e-cigarettes for combustible tobacco cigarettes reduces users' exposure to a large number of toxicants and carcinogens uh, that are present in combustible tobacco. Now, many of us as vapors already know this, but I did want to state that for the public. That information is out there. It's just clouded and polluted by all of the propaganda that's currently flooding. Uh, the US market and globally, sadly. Uh, the safety of vaping as a whole has long been in debate between doctors, advocates, the federales, and of course, the general public. By comparison, nicotine salt liquids are typically deemed just as safe as traditional e-liquids. Although, and I have to add this here, one thing has to be considered. Nicotine salts are not as easy to integrate into e-liquid. Benzoic acid is often added into the composition for this reason. There's there's been no long-term studies in regards to long-term inhalation of benzoic acid. I wanted to include that, but, and I have to throw in a big but here, despite that fact, it's become generally and widely accepted abroad that vaping is considerably less dangerous than smoking. So whether you're a consumer or a mixer mixing for yourself, nicotine salts are touted as being just as safe as traditional e-liquids. Until next time, guys, I hope you enjoyed this presentation and discussion on nicotine salts. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment, comments below and uh, what your experience is with using nicotine salts. I, for one, have been very much enjoying it. I look forward to presenting you guys in the next, presenting to you guys in the next video. Uh, I am all set up now. It has taken quite a, quite a little while for me to get ready and prepared to do this, but I think I'm ready to start recording daily now. Uh, I'm in a better position in life, guys. So last night I very much enjoyed the uh, concert, Aaron Lewis. It's my dude, man. If you guys have not heard of Aaron Lewis, where have you been? He used to be with the rock band Stained. But anyway, this concludes the video on nicotine salts. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts below. And until next time, Cloud Salute. Ain't none of this shit promise, ain't none of this promise. Ain't none of this shit promise, ain't none of this promise. Ain't none of this shit certain, ain't none of it certain.